Yo, Elliot, how do I get out of this trap of instant gratification and following my feelings versus long-term constructive decision-making? Yo, Elliot. Thank you for the question, my dude. And the very first thing I'd like to do is to bring your attention to the fact that you and I have three brains. When I talk about these three brains, I'm talking about biologically our neocortex brain, our uh, cortex and medulla, or our neomammalian brain, mammalian brain, and our brainstem, or our head, our heart, and our balls. But for today's purpose, we're gonna be focusing on this idea of using our head for intellect and our heart for intuition. And when you talk about this instant gratification following your feelings thing, you're talking about leading with your heart or leading with your intuition or leading with your feminine aspect, your feminine brain. Uh, when we are having long-term constructive decision-making, we're really being more analytical, we're being more rational, we're being uh, more guided by our intellect and our masculine brain. So with regard to our, we'll stick with thinking in terms of masculine and feminine, right? Because each one of us have a masculine intelligence and a feminine intuitiveness. We are talking about our objective thinking and our subjective thinking. When you're thinking objectively, you move back and see yourself and your experience as objects. There's no feeling with regard to objective thinking. There's pure rational. Then when you get into the feeling of things, into the intuiting of things, into the emotionality of things, you're talking about your heart and your feminine brain. We are living in a time of tremendous change. And with this change, we're, follow, we're finding that uh, for many generations, we have been ruled by our objective thinking, our masculine brain. If you just look at how children are taught in school, they're taught to sit down and to take in information and add it up and spit it back out during exam time. Uh, you look at the scientific revolution and all the technology that's available with this objective thinking. We've been very objective in our thinking, in our ways of being, so much so that it's grown pathological. You can only be as disastrous and destructive to the planet and to one another when you just see the planet and other people as objects, objective thinking. We are, we are now seeing the ills of being too objective. The pendulum has swung too far towards the rational and masculine brain. As with every imbalance, as with every lean too far in one direction of the pendulum, you're going to end up with a return and a pathological overemphasis on the other side. It just seems to be our way. We're looking for a balance. We're looking for a, uh, to get in between both of our head and our heart brain. Being led by the heart brain, which is the other end of the spectrum, is something that is sort of new to, uh, to, the, to males in our culture. Uh, prior to our generation, maybe my, my father and my father's father and, you know, a few generations back, boys weren't allowed to feel. If you, uh, if you, if you express too much femininity, too much emotion, too much feeling, you were looked upon as uh, suspect. And so we spent a lot of our time suppressing feeling. One of the things that we know now about suppressing feeling is that it never really goes away. It just stays trapped down below and rules you from the underground, from the unconscious. And so that's pathological also too. But with the backlash or the big pendulum swing towards the other direction, now we got a bunch of boys who are very subjective, very feeling, very emotional, and not honoring, considering, utilizing that rational, intellectual brain. And so there's confusion. Oftentimes, these days we're wondering amongst ourselves, what is it to be a man? Should a man be feeling and crying? 
Or should a man be cool, calm, collected, and objective? Which one? I, in many videos in the past, have called for a return to the heart, to the subjective. I was a big champion for that. The reason why I was in that uh, mode of uh, teaching and why I asserted those, those ideas was because I realized how far objectivity has reigned. It's just been, it's been too much that you talk to people and, and, and they can't feel, they can't think with their hearts. So for example, one of these things that I like to champion these days is circumcision. Those of you who are uh, outside of the United States or uh, Israel, Palestine don't realize that there is a culture of dick cutting, right? This is where for many generations, boys come into this world and they're subjected to male genital mutilation, a piece of their penis is cut off. Now, you can control people with the rational brain by giving them facts. Right? And facts are always manipulated. You can give them facts about why something should be the way it is. But sometimes facts need to be overturned by knowing, by intuition, by feeling. It doesn't take too many facts or it doesn't, it doesn't take too much of a, you don't have to think too hard to realize that that's barbaric. Just, just, just sense in your heart, cutting Mutilating, hurting, destroying, violating, violence is wrong, right? The heart knows that instantly. The head can, be, can, can literally override the heart with facts. Facts, cool, objective facts. So it can be very damaging, very deleterious, and very detrimental to our capacity as human beings. I'm just giving you one example here. We're destroying the planet and one another because we don't know how to feel with our hearts, think with our hearts any longer. Now, I believe that we're moving into a world, into a, a phase of humanity where it's no longer gonna be this pendulum swing from masculine to feminine or from patriarch to matriarch or from the objective to the subjective because both ends are pathological. A man who can only feel and emote is not a man at all. And a man who's so cold and objective and rational is not a human being at all. He's a robot. What we're looking for is a connection with the two. I like to say thinking with your heart and feeling with your mind. Using the two together in conjunction with one another. And you, my man, as a man, must know that thinking with the head comes first. I said earlier that, uh, or I may have may not have said earlier, that uh, in some traditions they say that the man is the head of the family. And that is not to be sexist. That is to say that men are just wired to use their heads first, more. It's our tool. We're, 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 we're trained that, we're, we're wired that way. It's our biology. Where women are, you know, following the heart a bit more. They're more intuitive. The rational masculine main, uh, brain is the positive brain. It goes first. The, the, it, it, and for us, it goes first because we are men. And as a man, for you to be a man, and for you to be a good decision-making man, you must first have a vision for your life, a vision for your family, a vision for your wife. You've got to be able to take that pin and drop it on the map so that you know where you're going. A man that doesn't step up into the helicopter view of his life and look at things objectively so that he can decide on where he's come from, where he is, and where he's going to go is a lost, lost man. And if that man doesn't use his rational brain to set that plan for himself and his family, he's going to be floating in the wind. He's going to be just like a ship lost at sea. Right? Wherever the storm takes him is where he's gonna go, oh, this feels good, I'm gonna go there. Oh, that feels good, I'm gonna go over there. Oh, there's that shiny, shiny object, I'm gonna go over there. Men need to be grounded, and a part of being grounded is to have a vision, to have that pinpoint on the map. Where am I going? Now, maybe for another video, I'd talk, like to talk about how to relate to that pin, but from this point out, I'd like to talk about how to get to where that pin is. 
When we set that pin, we're using our masculine mind, our objective mind, our long-term analytical, rational decision-making, like you said. How we get to that pin will require intuition. This is where we begin to balance the two brains, or we begin to lead with the head and follow with the heart. Following with the heart, once the pin has been set, is about being receptive enough to follow the way that's being shown to you. Follow the signs, follow the omens, follow your intuition. All these things are good, they're right. Follow your heart, trust your heart. But they can only be trusted if you know where you're going, where you set that pin. So my man, I'm asking you to stay connected to your feelings, stay connected to your whimsical nature, stay connected to your intuition. But only trust it if and when you've led with your head brain and set that pin down. Lead with the mind, follow with the heart. Done.